Book of Oa is filled with many brave stories of the Kor, some of them triumphant, others tragically noble. Kor members often listen to these tales for guidance and inspiration. Our rings work because we will them to. If there is any hint of doubt behind our actions, it slips into our constructs and makes them vulnerable. To be in this core, you must not only be able to overcome fear, but also doubt. For doubt is fear of one's own will. But how can anyone manage to live a life without doubt? As rational beings, we must doubt ourselves often. To constantly act without questioning one's own actions is foolishness, not bravery. Doubt is important, but it cannot be allowed to overwhelm, to consume. But how to balance this? How to be sure of your actions without compromising your will? Perhaps you could hear stories of others who found themselves in similar circumstances, yet managed to overcome their doubts and persevere. Perhaps my own story could help. I am Rotlop Van, and this is my story. The story of one who is not a Grand Lantern. I come from a region of space without stars. The charts of Oa refer to it as the Obsidian Depths. Because of these conditions, no creature on my home planet, and indeed few within the domain, have ever developed what are known as... Uh, eyes. My fellow core members have done their best to explain these bizarre organs to me. I understand conceptually that there exists a wavelength of energy that if one has eyes one can perceive the world through, that stars emit this energy called light, and that differences in it exist called colors. Most creatures perceive this energy similarly to how I perceive sound and tone. This is all to say that while I am technically a Grand Lantern, I prefer to think of myself as the one and only F-sharp bell. But while I am far from the oddest member of the core and am often witness to how powerful our great diversity of species makes us, I must admit that I once felt doubt in my worthiness to be in the core. Overcoming that was not easy. Listen carefully, for it is here that my story begins. Ring scan broadcasts. What happened? Luxury space liner, gaze. Crew, 300. Passengers, 1,000. Ship is being pulled into Class Ne gas giant. Broadcasts indicate that the ship was brought closer to planet's atmosphere. To impress tourists, a sudden spike in the planet's gravity caused by a tidal bulge in deep gases drew the ship in. All engines failing. Projected loss of life, total. I'll pretend I didn't hear that. Patch me through to the bridge. Connecting now. This is Captain Pagona. We're in urgent need of help. This is Rob Lop Fan, F Sharp Bell of Sector 911. I'm here to assist. F Sharp Bell? Ring, translate to his culture's understanding of the core. Oh, a green lantern! Please help us! Our engines are all failing! We're moments away from being crushed! Why haven't you deployed any life pods? The gravity is too strong. The thrusters wouldn't clear the planet's pull. I doubt even you will be able to save the ship. You may be right. I'm going to use constructs to replace your engines. That'll buy us some time to evacuate. The constructs are in place. Don't kill your engines yet. We'll need every bit of thrust we can get. 
Warning, construct output quickly depleting willpower energy supply. Power level 75% and falling. Captain Bagona, you better load those escape pods quickly. Understood. Captain to all hands, load the escape pods. This is a full evacuation. But sir, the gravity, the pods won't make it. A green lantern is out there. Let him worry about the pods after they're off the ship. Right now, we need to evacuate. Construct drain severe. Power level now at 61.3%. Captain Bagona, what's the status of the evacuation? We're almost ready. Just 10 more minutes. Time till complete power loss. 12 minutes. Captain. Launch the full pods now. Load anyone left into the remainder. Pods 1 through 50, launch now! Power level at 54.87%. on those pods. It looks like that dip got people motivated. They're almost full. We're almost there. Power level 39.84%. We've loaded all the passengers. Launching pods 51 through 100 now. Crew, begin boarding remaining escape pods. Power level 23.42%. Captain Pagona to Green Lantern. The majority of my crew is ready to go. There are only a handful of us left. We're willing to go down with the ship. I'm preparing to launch the remaining pods now. No one is getting left behind! You get all your crew loaded in the remaining pods right this second! But what about you? All of this has to be taking a toll on your energy supply! The only thing taking a toll on my supply is this ridiculous conversation. Don't contact me again until you're in a pod and ready to launch. Power level 20. Well, you heard him. Move it. Let's go. Is everyone accounted for? I think so, sir. We're ready to go. Launching pods 101 through 150 now. Power level 10%. Scan pods. Are all crew and passengers accounted for? No. Pods indicate three passengers did not board. But we wouldn't want to make this easy. Of course not. Scan ship now. Power level 9.64%. Unable to perform additional scan. Estimated time remaining till 0% power. Three minutes. That's one minute per passenger. This will be easier than tasting his eye dropping in a Tatanese dessert. <laughs> Level 8.27%. I got that. Right now, I need to listen for the passengers. <laughs> There's one. Oh no! It's happening. It's being pulled in. I, I, I can hear the ship collapsing on itself. Not yet. You must be the lantern. Please, help me. I got trapped under this toy. Two more. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> One.
deck down. Power level 5.21%. Thruster constructs weakening. Failure imminent. I can do this. I can find them. There's someone there. Please. I can't get to a pod. Please help. Hope you're ready for a quick flight. Power level 4.57%. Thruster constructs crumbling. Ship will be crushed in 1 minute 15 seconds. <sighs> Do not fear. I found you. Captain Pagona, this is Rodlop Fan. My charts indicate that the third moon is habitable. We will land and rendezvous there. Power level 0.5%. I was able to get the passengers and crew safely onto the third moon of the gas giant. There I used the last bit of ring energy that remained to send a request to Oa for pickup. I also let them know of my need of a backup battery to charge. We were stranded on the moon's surface for about one rotation. The escape pods were well stocked, so no one went hungry. Everyone was so grateful for my bravery. I couldn't help but feel doubt begin to scratch the back of my mind. A Keth ship arrived early on the second rotation. The Keth passengers were overjoyed. Yeah! Yeah! I'm so happy! It's you! Yeah! Here it is! This is awesome! The ship was accompanied by Corps member Bizd, who was using his ring to suspend a backup battery for me. Greetings, Ratlatan. Here's the battery you requested. Do you wish to recharge your ring now? No, not yet. Let's help the Keth first. They are anxious to get home. Two lanterns together! What are the chances? I knew the core was full of species from all over the galaxy, but a fly ranking among them? Who knew? Not many. My size and genus have given me a great advantage in many battles. <laughs> I would imagine so. Well, after everything I saw your partner here do, I doubt I'll ever underestimate what any Lantern is capable of. Lantern fan, my crew, our passengers, and myself will never forget everything you did for us. Lantern... Uh... I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. Bzzd. Bzzd? If you have any sway with the Guardians, help get this man a medal, a promotion, or whatever it is you Lanterns get. <laughs> I only did what any of Sharp Bell would do. We should get everyone on board the ship now. Thank you so much.
You're one of the good ones. I very much should go back to Oa. I'll buy you a drink at the Warriors. It was well earned after a mission like that. I am not sure. I think I may return to Oa, but not to celebrate. I don't understand. You realize how difficult saving that ship was. You should be proud. I'm happy that I was there to help, but any lantern could have done the same. Only they could have done it without putting everyone at risk in the end. I saved the Keth, well, what if the moon hadn't been here? Use your ring, Burst. Are there any other habitable bodies in this system? Ring. Scan for nearby habitable planets or moons in system. One found at current location. Identification. GB10697 IL. Outside the system. How far to the nearest? Approximately three light years away. Planet Beton. What is the point of these questions? I didn't know the moon was here until after I left the ship to collapse. I had the ship eject its pods and wait for me. Tell me, Burst, do you think you could travel three light years with over a hundred escape pods on only 0.5% power? I would try. Regardless, you wouldn't have to. I wasted my power searching that ship. No one else in the Corps would have needed to. You don't think other Lanterns would have searched for just three passengers? Because I can assure you they would. I know that. But I wasted the last 10% of my power sending out sound waves to find them. All to cover for my own inability. I almost let the Keth adrift in a remote region of space. With nothing but the hope that their distress signal got picked up by someone else and that they would arrive before supplies run out. Lives were put at a greater risk because of me. Burst, I will return to Oa, but not to celebrate, to resign. This is not you, this is fear speaking. Doubt, you cannot doubt your ability to serve. All that does is compromise your will. Doubting your own will won't allow you to will the ring. All you are left with is a prediction which brings itself to fruition. Uh, there must be something I can say or do to convince you. Let me help. The only thing I wish to ask of you is to charge the ring for me. I do not feel I can take the oath right now. I have will enough to return to Oa. Alone. So I can inform the Guardians of my resignation. The ring should be passed on to someone who can use it properly. Uh, Ratlap Fan. This is a difficult thing to ask. I see doubt so strongly grip you and am saddened. Know that I think you are wrong, and do believe in your will even if you don't. Um, but I respect your decision nonetheless. Give me your ring. In brightest day, in blackest night, no evil shall escape his sight. Let those who worship evil's might beware his power. Rutla fans light. Power level 100%. I know the words themselves have little meaning to you, but they feel just as much a part of me as my wings or sting. Know how truly I believe in that oath, and by extension, you. Thank you for your words, and your help. But my decision has been made, Burst. <laughs>
Arriving on Oa is always overpowering on every conceivable level. There's the initial surprise of your first time there, to find out that life is the rule, not the exception in the universe, and that so many species are represented in an organization created to work together and protect that diversity of life, fills you with awe. Then there are your return visits, where the complexity of creatures you encounter only deepens as you begin to socialize and make friends with beings from halfway across the galaxy doesn't take too long before being overpowered by a sense of loss. The core exists on a basis of constant recruitment. Soon those friends across the stars you made aren't around anymore. You honor their sacrifice and push on. Suddenly Oa doesn't feel as vast as it first had. For myself though, the most overwhelming aspect of Oa is on a pure sensory level. My race lives a fairly rural existence, with few cities and only sparse interstellar contact. All the sounds and smells, the heavy weight of the air pressure, and the constant changes of temporary populations often strain my more acute senses. I adjust the ring ore to be thicker and filter more of what I experience. Upon this visit, as I craft the barrier, it feels even thicker than normal. Alarming! Bell 911.1. We don't normally receive you in the Citadel of the Guardian. Please state the reasoning behind this visit. Hello, Salak. I've come to seek an audience. Do you have a major threat to report? This is a personal matter. Surprising. I imagine this must be of some importance. Kilowog is giving them his weekly briefing on the training of new recruits. You may enter and wait till he is done to speak. Would it be possible to wait elsewhere until Kilowog is done? Peculiar, but I suppose. Follow me. Will this do? Yes, thank you. May I ask why you insist on not waiting in the Citadel? As you said, Kilowog is there currently. I prefer to avoid him whenever possible. Interesting. Kilowog has remarked that you don't seem to like him, though you demanding to be elsewhere is rather petty. For the record, I would find it impossible to not like Kilowog. Also, for the record, he has a very strong body odor I prefer to avoid. Oh, oh, perfection. I'm never going to let him live that down. The door across the room leads into the Citadel Chamber. Your ring will signal you when Kilowog has left. Being back on Oa in the Citadel, I am reminded of my first time here. Kamatui gave me the ring and did her best to explain the core to me. She adjusted what she needed to so I could will the ring to function as I needed. But the call to Oa from the Guardians came soon enough, and suddenly the strange yet novel words of Katmatui unfolded into a new understanding of the universe that I never knew I could never have known about. That is honestly a fairly routine experience for your first visit to Oa. The gasps and lost child nature of the new recruits is something the older members often joke about. The truth is that few are prepared for their first visit to Oa. Those that claim to have been are liars. Sitting here, waiting for their audience, I feel many of the same emotions as the first call. Even the physical sensations seem to be novel again, though now with a more bitter twist. Where once there was exhilaration brought on by the unique coursing feel of the garment the ring created, it now feels restrictive. Its flowing energy is distracting, and its temperature controllers mismatched. The shortness of breath experienced as my mind raced, wondering what the Guardians would be like. What they would have to say is back. Now I wonder what they will say to this news of my resignation. Point one. 
It is most rare for you to appear here. Salak tells us you have a matter of some personal business you wish to consult about. I do hope this is truly important. Yes, Guardians, I believe it is. I've come to inform you of my resignation. Resignation? This is preposterous. Well, we I heard of it. We don't have time for this. We always it. have time to listen to a valued member of the core. This... this... Interaction. The responsibilities of the Green Lantern can't be cast aside so easily. Resign from the court. The wind chose him, not the other way around. Let us not jump to conclusions. Hush. Yes, I understand that the man who just killed such a high-seeded and steadfast man is not important. We don't have time to train any unnecessary Decorum, please. It is most rare for a long-term member of the Corps such as yourself to resign. Even more so without good reason. Good reason I have. The best. My continued presence in the Corps will put lives at risk. And that is not something I am willing to do. You'll forgive us for having a hard time believing that after serving for so long you've now become a danger to the Corps. I never thought of it as a problem before. I could never conceive of it as a problem before. But my most recent mission served to demonstrate to me that I am unfit to serve. You speak of your rescue of that ship? Yes, I nearly drained my ring, producing sound waves to help myself find remaining passengers. If it weren't for the luck of a nearby moon, I would not have survived. And the civilians may have been put in further danger, too. No other lantern would have had to waste that additional power. Surely one mission is not enough to throw away such a successful career. But what of the next mission? And the one after that? How many times would I have to fail before it becomes enough of a problem? With all due respect, Guardians, I care far too much about the lives in my sector. And those whom I serve with. I refuse to be a liability to them. Nearly failing once is enough for me. You sound very upset. Tell us, have you consulted with Mogo? Doing so has helped other Lanterns work through the barriers which block their will. Could not the same be done for you? Mine is not a problem of will! Obviously. Mogo cannot give me Saget. Nothing can be done to help me with this issue. Please understand, Guardians. I make this decision not out of any desire to stop serving, but because I feel it's the best decision for all. If you wish, I will go and consult Mogo, but nothing said will sway me. I am certain. I do not desire to waste anyone's time. My decision has been made. That much is apparent, but ours is not. Is that so? Yes. Indeed. Rotloff fan, we would request time to consider your points. Surely you would not object to staying on light duty for a few cycles while we discuss what you have said. May I ask what you would have me do in the meantime? Perhaps you could help with the latest temporary population. 2682.2 has recently dropped off some refugees fleeing ethnic cleansing on their home planet. They need someone to help with getting accustomed to Oa as we search for a suitable long-term home. I would be glad to assist. Thank you for respecting my request. When should I return? We will deliver a final decision within six cycles and no later. Agreed. Very well. I will consult with Salak about the refugees. Did you say what you needed to? Regrettably so, but there will be time for that discussion later. I've been assigned to assist the refugees brought in from Sector 2682. Anything I should know? 2682? 2682? Oh, yes, bit of a sad case. Though I suppose that's the way of these things. You'll be helping the Brylar get settled. It seems they will be here some time. Very specific dietary requirements will make finding a suitable empty planet for them taxing. We're getting them a replacement planet? Was their own destroyed? Uh, negative. They were chased off by an extremely fanatical population. It's a dual species planet, and peace does not appear to be an option. 
Why not? Obstinacy. The Brile are only a third of the total population, and they have little to no support among the dominant Ganua. The Brile have isolated themselves for centuries now behind natural defenses and advanced shielding, but the zealot nature of the Ganua has finally pushed them into technological superiority. It appears that the only option for the Brile was fleeing the planet. Or genocide. Eh, quite. A situation far too common across the galaxy. What ludicrous reason do these Ganua give for their disgusting behavior? Drivel. There is a bitter irony that you are being assigned to this case, Rotlock fan, for you are unable to, shall I say, experience what it is that drives the Brylar from their home. Oh? Positively. I know you have an understanding of light. Have you heard of- Untranslatable. Oh, apologies. How shall I proceed? Have it translate to the Earthman's language. I will learn the word that way. Curious? Why Earth? Rainer is the only one ever able to explain light or color to me in any way that made sense. He works in the arts of Earth, so had a unique ability to articulate the two. He couldn't understand how to wield the ring without sight, so we exchange knowledge. I prefer to learn new words and ideas related to the concept in his language to better connect them. Riveting. In any case, the Earthlings call it bioluminescence. It's a process by which their very bodies emit light. The Gnua are not capable of this and have used the difference as a basis for all manner of vile hatred. Isamot Cole was able to help the remaining Brylar escape their planet during a large-scale assault by the Gnua. We're at an unfortunate impasse. The Corps can't force the Ganua to accept the Brylar, and is rarely successful to give high-level protective technology to a less advanced society. To do so would likely incite more escalation, and that would not be beneficial to anyone involved. Even sheltering the Brylar has proved a dangerous move. Isamot Cole has had to avoid the system or risk coming under attack as an enemy of the Ganuan state. They've all but declared war on the Green Lantern Corps for, quote, protecting the unnatural ones from their rightful destruction. Given the auras our rings put out, they've even begun to go so far as to accuse the Corps of being related to the Brylar. Let us take that as a compliment. Indeed. You will find the Brylar in the Southern Hemisphere. They'll need help learning how the refugee homes on Oa function, a system in setting up schools and any special needed facilities, medical eco-management, entertainment. I'm sure you know the rest. As I said, it appears they may be with us for a while. Terraforming a planet is a distinct possibility with the needs they have. Concerns you have, if you could just let me talk for a moment. I'm not going to get anywhere like this. Quiet, please! Thank you. I'm Rotlop Fan, and I've been assigned to help you get comfortable here on Oa. Is there someone who I can speak to directly to help with as many broad needs as possible first? Do you have someone who leads a large portion of your society? Someone who can speak for many of you? Okay, well, the first thing we need to do is get someone I can deal with directly. Someone who has the interests of all of you close at heart. Any volunteers? Perhaps I can help? I've studied other cultures, and I understand hierarchical structures. Is that what you're asking for us? For the moment, yes. Uh, though it doesn't have to be long term. Will everyone be okay with you representing them? I hold their survival most important, as they do mine. So long as I act accordingly to that guideline, I'm sure they will agree to making me their representative. 
Is there any major dissent? Good. Come. It's so. It's so. I'm Rodlob Fan. Come, let us talk about settling you. Come on, Andrew. Let's go find a place to put the kids down. What the hell is this? So your society has no leaders? Not for many generations. We work mostly within small, self-sufficient family groups. What of crime? How do you deal with someone who harms others? That happens rarely. Living under the shield and the walls, going back many generations, the reality of our cooperation with one another in order to ensure our own survival was obvious. Safety is incredibly important to almost all of us. Those who do not value it by harming others, well, usually, their families take care of them. Some live in a state of home confinement. Others have chosen to exile loved ones. It's not something any Bryla would hope to see happen to another. Unusual, to say the least. You said that they would listen to what you had to say because you valued their survival most of all. Tell me, what do your people need? Our main source of food is Pult. Do you have any here? Do you have a sample so I can determine? Class Char's biological food supplement. Ground from plant life. Nutritional value, high. Universal availability, rare. Known planets suitable for supporting plant growth, minimal. Possibility of supplementing with other resources, weak. So... Then we're doomed. We won't be able to eat. That's the only food resource we've had for generations. I don't think we'll be able to eat anything else. Salak did say you have a very particular diet. Allow me to check. Of course. Class Dude Life Form. Sentient. Herbivore. Cross-reference dietary needs with known plant species. Find acceptable resource. Resource found. <sighs> that is the opposite of good. What now? For the moment, there is no need to worry. The energy that supplies our rings can be used to supply the body with nutrients. You will not go hungry. I assume you bought pulse seeds? Yes, of course. Good. Then it won't be overly pleasant, but we can keep you healthy during your stay on Oa. I'm not sure how long it will take to locate a planet suitable for your needs, though. On that, what of our protection on our new planet? Protection? Yes. What little fighting force we had was wiped out to allow Azimek Cole to evacuate us. Will the Lantern Corps protect us from the Ganua? I don't think you understand. You will be moved to a new planet. A home, hopefully. All your own. There will be no Ganua. There are stories about how the Ganua and the Bryla first discovered each other. How they lived in peace, but they brought war. So we fled across the deserts and deep into the mountains. There we found asylum. But the Ganua came. Massive walls were built, carved out of the very stone of the mountains. And we were safe. Until the Ganua built towers and developed explosives to blast through the walls. Then people from the stars came. They wanted the metals we had removed from the mountains in exchange for protection from the Ganua. They gave us the shield. We were finally protected. Forever. But then it fell. Now we have fled again, saved by the Green Lanterns. I do not mean to sound ungrateful, but the Ganua come. They always come. I always enjoyed the work of helping new species get accustomed to unfamiliar places, though it was certainly an endeavor that required a degree of patience. Explaining and re-explaining new concepts is not a duty for those with a temper. 
Introducing a species to a new home, especially one as foreign and as vast as Oa, is usually a slow process. But the Brylar were fast learners. I suppose generations working on a highly advanced alien shielding system for their own protection required as much. A concern began to grow within me in regards to that, a conversation I had with Itso. A shield meant to keep out the likes of the Dominators surpassed by a largely terrestrial force. What kind of innovators were these people up against? Could we really drop them off on a lone world unprotected for long? Would a species so determined they're willing to declare war on the core just let the Brylar be? It was because of these concerns that I decided to talk to Isamat Cole. With only a short time left as a member of the core, I wanted to ensure that the Brylar were protected. Is a uh, Rotlop fan here? Yes, over here. Please, sit. Hope you don't mind if I sit outside the booth. My tail can't stand those bench seats. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I didn't even think of that. Uh, would the bar be better? Don't worry about it, I can't stay long anyway. I just got your ring message. You had some questions about the Ganwa? Yes, I read your report, but since it's focused mostly on the Brylar and what you were trying to do to boost their shield's power generators, I was hoping you could provide more detail about the Ganua's military worry, capability. Well, it was able to overwhelm three redundant power generators, so I can tell you it was huge. There was shelling from both ground troops and targeted fire from ships in orbit. To aim weapons at their own planet? Not just weapons. Fleets of ships. Once I knew that the shield was going to fail, well, I didn't want to have to fly through those things with all the sieves. That's why I took a whole section of the planet with me, lifted up the entire shielded area, and got out of there into light speed as quickly as I could. My arms nearly fell off kind of the strain. I'm thankful they didn't. They'd have grown back. <laughs> <laughs> I hear happy hours starting early tonight. Most I can tell you about the Ganwa is that they hold a grudge. Me and Vath trying to steer clear of that part of our sector. Hotheads are out on patrols, searching livable planets to see if we lied about bringing the Brylar back here for protection. Why would we lie? I asked the same. They looked at me like I spit on them. One of them said that keeping a glower in our home would be disgusting and out of the question. I think they can't imagine how anyone could want to keep the Brylar around. Even seeing Vath and my shield seemed to piss them off. I think I heard one of them mutter something about us and the Brylar being related. How would you rank their technological capability? What, like how quick they pick up tech stuff? Let me put it this way. I've come across those same shields back when I was fighting in the Thanagarian infantry. Never saw anything get through one before. And the one the Brylar were using on Ganwa, it was the best I've ever seen. But you should have been under it when it was failing. The Ganwa knew they were close, and the blast absorption and the distribution the thing was doing, just wow. From what I saw of the Ganwa, just about everything in their society seemed to be structured around destroying the Brylar. So I'd rank their tech ability around whatever they needed to be to get the job done. They'll build, buy, or steal whatever they need to do it. Alert! Multiple ships coming out of light speed in upper atmosphere. Alert. Multiple ships, Alert. Out of Multiple ships coming out of light speed in upper atmosphere. How many? Any indication who they are? Calculating. 1,584 ships. 2,909 rising. The ships match those encountered in sector 2,682. Ganuan. Ship count 4,825. Not to brag, but called it. Indeed. Now we just need to survive so you can tell everyone about it. Incoming message from invading fleet. Attention, Green Lanterns. You are harboring Grylar. This is a crime punishable by extermination. Hand them over and we will leave you alive but this arm so you can never stand against the purity of the Ganua again. Continue to protect them and you will be dealt the punishment befitting this crime. An attack on any Ganuan vessel will be interpreted as consent of your destruction. 
You have one quarter rotation to comply. Attention all lanterns. This is a secure message from the Guardians. Ensure your rings are charged and prepare to defend Ella and its inhabitants. We've sent for reinforcements. The order for a coordinated the deck will be given shortly. To attack Ella? Even with the element of surprise in so many ships is foolish. Any lantern can take down ten ships on their own. Well, let's make it twenty and really embarrass them. Lantern Cole, did you fight any of their ships when getting off planet? A few, but I don't think they know what the rings are capable of in large numbers. Something about this still sounds off to me. Mm, perhaps. But this appears to be a time to think on the battlefield, not in the trenches. We'll have to trust in the Guardians to handle the strategy. I've got a battery here. Everyone charge up. Something tells me we'll need it. Are you sure you can do this? Now is not a time for doubt. Lives hang in the balance. First, I have been in the core longer than you have. I think I know how to handle an invasion of Oa. <laughs> that confidence in your voice, it's refreshing. It take the battery. You go first. In loudest din, or hush profound, my ears catch evil's slightest sound. Let those who told out evil's knell, beware my power, the F-sharp bell! Power level 100%. Attention, all refugees have been secured. Results on the Gnuan fleet will begin momentarily. They've are nearly completely surrounded, and the capability of their weapons appear sufficient to do significant damage to both Oa and standard constructs. But their defense systems seem lacking in comparison. It appears that attacking a sheltered enemy for years has led to some overconfidence on the needs of defense. Unfortunately, that's the best news we have. Circumstances being what they are, there's little strategy to this battle. We'll have to push them back, hope they consolidate their forces to smaller areas, and see if we can flank them from there. For right now, we need to focus on punching our way out of the cage they have us in. Lanterns, fight well. Kill a war. You in the old blue boy! Come on, posers! Let's show these knocks to his planet this is! Take more than some lasers to take down the core. Let's see how you hardheads like this. bet on a secret weapon. There's always a secret weapon. It's a sure thing. I suppose we'll have to reassess once we figure out what this does. If we make it, <laughs> and so close to retirement. I'm tempted to blame this whole mess on you now. Cheers to Maximum!
I can't see. Neither can I. Booth, what happened? I don't know. Whatever they did seems to have made all of us blind. Wing, analyze the effects of the wave they hit us with. A wave composed of energy from primary visual spectrum, inverse to current sensory input of most lanterns. Primary effect appears to temporarily cancel out ability to perceive visual spectrum. How long will the effects last? Unknown. I suppose it doesn't matter now. They blinded us back as a main squad. They still haven't surrounded to begin with, which just means if you fire flying a mess, you still got a good chance of hitting something. Not hit the hard who's had no straight blasts either. Give me some razors then, but that two eye sweeps off there. Uh, let's give this a shot. Um. Uh, uh. I can't do it. If I can't see what I'm making, I can't make anything. Wait, but wouldn't a blaster be, like, longer than this? Something's not right. It's no use without the ability to aim. I can hear their ships dodging your constructs. Rain status reported. Green Lantern 257 deceased. Space Green status, status reported. Green, Green Lantern 69. Green State deceased. Space Sector 1672 deceased. Space Sector 1672 scanned for replacement sentient initiate. 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 Space Sector 1672 even with all of us, we can't hold this for long. We need a plan. I've got something. Yes? You! Rathapen, you're the only one not being affected at all by that wave of theirs. You're the only one who can fight right now. That might be true, but I can't take on an entire fleet by myself. Now is not the time for doubt. Where's that confidence we heard back in the bar? I thought you had dealt with a few invasions of Oa before. Not by myself. Well, this will give you something to brag about. This is right. The Guardians said it themselves. These Narcs have spent so long shooting at things without ever getting anything back. And they never put much into defense. We were cutting through these ships like they were nothing earlier. Run the band, get out there, and tear them to scrap! There's no time to argue about this! Those of us that can help are fire blind and hope for the best! But you gotta spearhead this fight! I'll destroy everything I can. I'll create as many homing constructs as possible. They'll latch onto different ships and help pull whatever constructs you can manage like a magnet. Contact the rest of the core that are here. Tell them to fire blind as best they can. Rattle up, Ben! Let those who toll out evil's knell! Beware my power, the F-sharp bell. Shield level maximum! Taking out ships, but not enough. It won't be long before they're able to converge on me. We don't have time to take these knocks out one by one. Thanks, beggar. I might have something. Cover your ears. This will be loud. What are you 
doing? I'm using the ring to emit sound waves at different frequencies as constructs. <laughs> They're tearing the ships apart. Wait a minute. This is kilowatt to all lanterns. Use your rings to emit sound. You'll receive a transmission of the frequency in just a sec. Turn it out in waves, and we'll rip these ugly things out of the sky. But sir, we don't know how to transmit sound through our rings. You're doing it right now, Pooza. Everything you need to know to do it is stuff you take for granted anyway. Lanterns, there's no room for doubt now. This is nothing more than a use for the ring that we've yet to come up with. Just like creating a construct. Will the ring to do it and it will happen. Beginning to retreat. Sight should return to you all soon. Disable their engines and weapons. I'll find the commander so a surrender can be negotiated. The Ganuans surrendered with a fair amount of protest. It appears they fitted every resource at their disposal into adjusting their armada to combat the Corps specifically. The surrender process was long and drawn out, but ultimately they were escorted back home and now need Guardian approval to construct any spacefaring vehicles. Lanterns Vath and Cole will be checking up on their compliance on a regular basis. The current hope is that with the Brylar off planet, the Ganuan society will have to turn its efforts inward for improvement. Opposed to projecting any issue on the Brylar, it's a nice hope. A suitable planet for the Brylar has been discovered in my own sector, right in the middle of the Obsidian Depths. It was initially ignored due to the lack of a sun, but given the unique biology of the Brylar, they won't require one for light. Should be a simple matter of creating vents to pull heat from the planet's core. They seem rather excited to have a planet all their own, though they will be shaken by the attempted invasion. On a personal level, my meeting with the Guardians was foremost on my mind. My final moments of being in the core had come and gone, but not without its fair share of catastrophe to be certain. As requested, we have considered your resignation from the core. And your decision? Remains to be finalized until the end of this gathering. Why? I know time passes differently for immortals such as yourselves, but my fellow core members, the lives in my sector only have so long to wait. I cannot put them at risk any longer. You still stand behind your initial decision, then? Nothing that transpired in the battle with the Genoa has altered your opinion? I cannot deny that, my disability. Perhaps a better word would be your diversity. Regardless of what we call it, it was helpful in the battle with the Ganua. But I believe the Core would have found another way to win. They always do. Precisely. Tell me something, Wadlock Fair. What, in your estimation, is the greatest asset of the Core? I suppose the central battery. It is the target of most attacks on Oa. Without it, the core would have few resources left of which to fight. But still, they would have resources, no. Um, forgive me, but I'm missing your point. Our decision has been made. Your resignation will not be accepted. But the danger I pose to the core and to others is negligible compared to the benefits gained by your presence in the core. As Guardian Sage stated, without the central battery, the core still functions. 
Without the rings, the core can still function as a force for good in the galaxy. The greatest asset of this core is its diversity. Hundreds of species from different parts of the galaxy make this core what it is. There are differences between them, too many to count in fact. These create unique problems that often take time to sort out. Let me assure you that this consideration was made long ago when the core was formed. We do not only accept the best and brightest of any given species. There is no set list of qualifications that need to be met to become a lantern. The only requirement to enter this core is to have been chosen by the ring. The ring chose you, Rod Love Fan. Any fault you may see in yourself, the ring considered and chose you regardless. So your resignation is not accepted. Not until that ring leaves you, should you choose to take it off and no longer return to help in your sector, then so be it. Perhaps then it will leave and choose a new bearer. But the ring has not accepted your resignation, and thus neither can we. Perhaps it senses something within you that you yourself cannot feel. And that is? Will. A will to fight. To save lives, even though you fear you won't be able to. The will to enter a doomed vessel when you know you may not come back out. The will to summon the strength required to defeat an armada by doing something with the ring no one else had thought of. Rutla Pan, you're still wearing your ring. Do you plan to remain in the core? I will. <laughs>